Yo, what's good? I remember my, my boy Loose Cannon. What's up with you? What's up with it? Shit, how you been doing today, bro? Man, I'm doing good. I'm blessed. Shit, so uh, what's new? What's what you been working on? Um, we're working on a couple projects. We got the song with Draco. I got a song with Offset, Rest the Kid, um, Quavo. You know, we just grinding everyday life. So originally you're from LA. How was that like experience kind of growing up around there? Well, I'm from South Central, Crenshaw District. Um, growing up there, it's, it's like a hard struggle, but it makes you who you are. Right. Um, so how do you kind of feel about like the rap scene like nowadays, like from like when you from back when you first started to now, like how do you kind of feel like it is? Um, a lot of WWE wrestling shit. It's like, um, it's politics, but then it's like, behind closed door everybody want to apologize and kiss ass and and but on social media is something totally different so do you kind of feel like the there's like a lack of like authenticity in yeah the... no definitely it's just a form of you know like scripted shit like everybody is just like on like wrestling shit everybody want to just perform in front of the camera but then when they see each other or um, after they perform in front of the internet for the people to see, they want to call, oh, it's not really like that, it's not that. It's like, with me, once we beef, we beef for life. So there's no me apologizing. So if we beefing, I'm going to let everybody know. There's no coming back from that. We, we should never, ever go and take it to that. If we ain't real enemies on the streets, and if we do, I'm going to treat you like an enemy on the street. So uh, I, I I seen you kind of mention like going to jail kind of like made you want to rap and stuff like is that like or what kind of like influenced you other than that like so start rapping? Um, basically, it's like uh, I was in jail. You know how uh, niggas beating on the bunks and stuff like that and start rapping and stuff. And everybody was like, and then you you put words together. You got a real talent. And I just took it from there every single day. I had nothing but time when I was behind jail. So. I was like, fuck it, let me put my story on, on paper. And then after paper, we put it on the beat. So when would you say you uh, like kind of took it more seriously? Like, when you trying to like take it seriously? Like, when was that? Uh, when I got shot and I feel like um, there's no loyalty to anybody in the streets, shit. Uh, I shot three times um, by your brother because of jealousy on, on how you was moving and what you getting and how you how you living. By your, your own brother? Yeah, my own brother. So it's like at the end of the day is, um, I got shot three times, called the police for help um, the paramedics and then woke up in handcuffs um, because I was a felon with a gun. So how did that kind of affect your relationship with your brother? Like, I guess you guys aren't cool anymore or like? No, I don't know. Fuck with him or anything like that. Not putting, the, don't want to put out the energy. But at the end of the day, it's like uh, he lived his life or whatever, and we just don't want to run across each other's paths. I know he don't want to run across my path anymore. How, how did that like affect you, like mentally? Were you like kind of like shook, or were you like confused? Or I mean, it's like the point of you can't trust nobody. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's like everybody would get you. If your own flesh and blood would do it, I mean, somebody else would do it even faster. So it's like I have no, uh, I don't know. I just don't get close to anybody no more. So what kind of goes into like your music? Is it like real life experiences or? No, it's all real life. Uh, and I know a lot of uh, rappers say it. But when you like hear me, it's just totally different. Like I might put a different twist into it and like metaphors and like punchlines and stuff, but it's just really all me. It just, I paint a picture on every day, every uh, life experience I lived. That, that's what I just do. So how'd you kind of get into like the industry, like being around people and stuff? Uh, I mean, everybody just took me under their wings. It's like I'm a real street nigga. So when niggas heard that I was rapping, it was like easy for me. Because everybody was like, oh, um, he just fucking with us. He ain't about to do nothing to us or whatever. I, I fuck with him. He a real nigga. And that's how it, it just came, authentic. So how did you, uh, did you know like YG and Nipsey before you started like rapping or like? Yeah, uh, Nipsey is from my hood. So, and YG, 
he was managed by um, my nigga from my hood. So when he was managed by a uh, nigga named Poon Daddy, um, basically um, I called um, um, Poon. I was like, um, bring YG. I'm gonna have him meet Nipsey and stuff like that. We will um, collab and do a song. And that's when we, um, Nipsey and YG first met. Uh, so what kind of like, uh... Like, what was kind of like the mindset like for making a song with, like with them? Uh, you just go in there and you just think like, shit, we all want to be successful. We always want to have a hit record. We always want to have a, a goal in mind. So that's what we do. Everybody just shut his eyes. Uh, Nipsey is on the like street shit. Uh, I'm on like the street politics, fly, get money shit. YG was on like the partying. Like steel blood shit, you know it worked. So were you and Nipsey like close? No, yeah, we or, was close. We was close. What? Why? Like, not what? saying uh, like cuz was my best friend or anything like that, but we, yeah, homies, yeah. you know, he got his own little um, his homie section. I got my own um, section and stuff like that. But uh, we respected each other. What and what kind of like ways did his passing like affect you? Like, or did you like? No, it, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts when um, you you stuck. You feel both sides, but it's just like it. You know, it hit different. It's just like when my brother shot me. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like the difference is my brother never went to jail or anything like that. So baby shitting in jail. So at the end of the day, it's like it, it really fucks you up. It's just like. When certain street shit happened, and there's no paperwork or anything out there, certain niggas have to do what they gotta do, and it just it took our great one. So how do you feel? Uh, how do you feel about like the whole kind of like Inglewood thing going on, like defacing murals and like disrespecting people like that, and like? Um, uh, I mean, people do certain shit for attention, and cloud chasing is a sport. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's like. People give what they deserve and put out the same energy. So at the end of the day, it's like, why make yourself a target when you can actually try to be successful and get money? Because um, painting over a mural don't make you no money. What it do get you extra likes on Instagram? That shit don't do nothing for you. Uh, do you feel like do you feel like like people like that are like in gangs should be like kind of like disciplined for like? doing that shit or like like cloud chasing or like you feel like it's kind of like accepted now like no nah, because the young niggas basically run the hood like what the old niggas gonna tell them um try to discipline them that ain't gonna work no more like these kids is not fighting so you think the, you think the, the ogs kind of lost respect like from the younger people some there's only um some keep that the same power because they in the mix but if uh a nigga's not in the mix with the um, homies and stuff like that. You can't tell the nigga what to do. Yeah. How did uh, how did that kind of like beef spark with Black 100 and stuff? Um, basically, it was like um, game. Basically, was doing a a video talking about niggas get killed like that at freestyle on the Instagram thing, and then um, he got a lot of backlash for the Inglewood niggas. And when they start, uh, and a lot of pyros and blood start backlashing them. So instead of him saying like, fuck that shit or whatever I said, what I said, cause took the high road and apologized for saying it. Um, basically, if you fuck with Nipsey like that, you wouldn't say shit anyway and just uh, did what it did. But the sixes didn't do that. So we ain't gonna claim no kill that we didn't do. So, and that put a lot of, people life in danger because you basically saying a six o just killed the nigga from Inglewood. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. he was in the heart zone. And that's not a real nigga shit. And Black Boy Honey uh, supported game on that. And I didn't think that was right. And then also Black Boy Honey, I, I beat up Molly Maul, slapped him up, and um, he chose sides on what a fraud nigga do. And when you when a, what a fraud nigga do, it always um, comes to light. So at the end of the day, Black 100 chose his side, wanted to speak, call somebody else that is speaking to me, 
he called somebody else speaking, oh, we don't fuck with Louis Cannon and this and this, he did this to uh, Molly Mom. Well, like, that was like some whole shit. Yeah. You tell you want some gay shit, that's some whole shit. Why you don't hit it, nigga? You get what I'm saying? Cuz follow me on Instagram. Cuz do all that stuff. Like, the, we, we tap in. But now it's like, I'm full blown. Like, I can't never fuck So you, you, don't, you don't entertain, like, the internet beef, like, at all, huh? No, I don't entertain none of that. That's goofy shit. And then he got rat lover too. I would never ever fuck with 6 9 If a nigga that told him put niggas that he fuck with in jail, like bro, like that's like some weirdo shit. You sitting down for what, a check? You should, that's why my so, shit is so IBM. Do you, do you feel like he was kind of blindsided by the money? Like he was more focused on the money than the politics of the situation? But you should never ever be blindsided when it comes down to um, the money aspect of of that big old when one door closes another door opens but he went to academics and they asked for that mm -hmm. so at the end of the day it's like like I don't know where his um, thinking is going maybe he put in a lot of money into like his artists and they not doing anything so he going broke and he probably need a bag real quick so you, do you feel like the streets is kind of like way like watered down than like when you first started out like it's kind of yeah. like or is it like the same i think the uh police run the industry uh, so at the end of the day it's like uh behind closed doors people don't even understand like niggas be police niggas be cops that's why they beef with everybody and don't get touched because they got the boys in blue fucking with so you mentioned uh, you're working on a movie, right? So why don't you tell us a little about like about that coming up? Um, I don't supposed to speak on it, but okay. it should be coming up at uh, the end of next year. Right. So how did you uh, come up with IBM? Like, how how did you create that? IBM is basically integrity before money. So it's like you could do everything the right way and get it. Um, like the right way and never look back behind your head. You don't have to duck nobody. You don't have to do anything like that. You have to have integrity about yourself and a lot of niggas don't. So you're the one who created the label or? Yeah. I'm the one who created who, who do you have like signed on there so far? Um, who's, who's a part of it? I got a, a couple of artists that I work with but not officially signed yet. Right. It's like... Um, so is it still like a new kind of label? Yeah, it's, it's a new thing. Right. So what's your kind of like overall goal with that though? Like, what do you hope to like accomplish? No, it's just like, uh, what everybody want to accomplish success. It's mm -hmm. like me being the front runner of the, I mean, front runner of our, our label. I mean, everything had to fall in line. Everything had to be strategic. The moves have to be in the right um, places, right timing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, I can't help nobody or try to put somebody else on if I'm not on all the way like that. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of mentioned uh, being fly. What got you into like uh, like clothes and stuff? I said, you know, everybody in um, you know LA is it's a fashion show, especially where I'm from. So just just the culture, kind of like yeah, into it. I mean, it's just like that, that's all we do. We get fly young niggas, um, fuck bitches, throw parties. You know, like you know fly once in a while but that's just come with our life do you ever kind of like get noticed like in public by people or not oh, really yeah, all the time so do you like do you like the attention or do i just be like kind of no, like cool I, I know what it comes with so it's like at the end of the day if god bless me with it then that's just what comes with it have you done any like performances and stuff yeah all the time well how, like what was your favorite event that you've done uh summer jam but, uh, like what, what was that like about? When, when was that? Um, two years ago. That was like the uh, right before the pandemic hit. So it was like that was the last show, and then everything else got locked down. So now everybody coming outside now. So we about to see um, where everything goes. What was the impact of like the co uh, coronavirus on you? Um, I got that shit. And that shit. It didn't fuck me up, but. Um, I still had to do like everyday activity, so you know I still worked out. I still um, played basketball. I still went to the stores and stuff. I just masked up, but I just fought it. And when I fought it, um, it went away like in like a week. 
but when people lay down and want to go to sleep and do that, it affects your body. You have to be active with their shit. So, uh, was it like not as bad as people like hype it up to be, in like your opinion, or? No, nowhere near. Like people just over exaggerating it. Yeah. Um. So you have, uh, when's some new music releasing? Like, when do you have uh, some new stuff coming out? Um, today. What are you What are you gonna drop? Like a tape or a uh, single? No, it's a single. It's called Cookout. And in two weeks uh, from today, we are dropping um, Ball Out with Draco the Ruler. All right. Uh, how'd you kind of like get involved with Draco? Like, how'd you guys meet up? You know, uh, neutral. Cause on for with Inglewood like that, and shit, you know where I'm from. You know the side. Have you like known him for a while, or do you guys just kind of like just meet type no, stuff? No, I've been fucking with Cuz for a while. So what kind of uh, like what's the mindset behind like that song? On um, the mindset is just like basically we like street niggas, but we fly and we ball out. We go to the strip club. We we do everything. You get what I'm saying? We like to have fun. We have a a regular life ourselves. Uh, do you feel like there's gonna like? What do you feel like kind of be kind of be like the end kind of like the Inglewood beef right now? Like, when do you think it's gonna kind of like just chill out? I mean, see, you have to understand that shit is really sick for. Like, for life, unless a, a nigga really, it, it it don't it can't take just one person. It has to be a a collective of groups of people to stop this shit. Do you know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys don't do like uh, you guys don't do like meetings and shit no more or like none of that. You think uh, young niggas is doing meet, uh, meetings after they just went to a funeral like a couple of weeks ago? Like that shit don't work. Yeah. So all the uh, like shit people put down the guns and all that stuff like that, that shit don't work. Like because you got a, a, a nigga, a high head that can't fight, he gonna pick up his gun because that's what he go to. Yeah. So uh, so like, that's like one of the big differences from like, back then you could squabble, but now everyone's just like dying shit now. Yeah, I mean, after they EDD and then PPP shit, everybody got gold and they got motherfucking guns. So at the end of the day, everybody going back broke. So. What is it to do? Find a lick or get mad and go bust on somebody. It's hot as fuck out here. It's summertime, niggas get irritated. Yeah, so uh, do you ha are you working on any projects or like any mixtapes or right now just staying with singles? No, um, I got a, a project. I actually got like 24 songs done. But at the end of the day, it's like um, I'm a real artist. So I might do like maybe like 50 songs, 60 songs and put out 15 are the best ones on the project. So what's kind of like your recording pro process? Like, do you write your stuff? Do you freestyle it? I, I used to write, but now I don't no more. Just straight punching? Like, yeah, straight punching. It's just like, I got too, like, it got too easy for me. So at the end of the day, it's just like, I go in there and I just punch in like four, every four bars, every eight bars sometimes. So how do you like, how do you like select your beats and how do you kind of like get your beats and all that? Um, I'm a producer. Oh, so you produce your own stuff? Yeah, I produce um, most of my stuff, not all of it, but uh -huh. most of it. So at the end of the day, if it's um, something that I fuck with, everybody uh, rock it, and then yeah, they say tapped into the streets. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you always want to create a new wave. So that's what I do. I, I try to create a new wave where nobody's on it. So when people jump on uh, the wave that I'm creating, it makes me bigger. So what uh, what artists did you kind of grow up listening to? What what music were you into like as a youngster? Oh uh, shit, I grew up like off of like um, Fifty Cent, um, Snoop, um, Little Wayne, um, Jay Z. I fuck with. I got to uh, fuck with him. Uh, I didn't really get to listen to like Biggie or Tupac or anything, but. Um, I fuck with the music that I hear. Yeah. So, um, like, I know you're kind of bigger, but, like, if there's any artists you could, like, work with, who would you choose to, like, do music with? Uh, it depends. If they're a real nigga, I'd do music with them. So you actually, like, you don't go based on, like, views or nothing? You actually, like, check out the person, like, before yeah, no, you do, I have like... To, I have to feel your vibe. Yeah, I have to feel, like, uh... Yeah, you could do, like, you could tell somebody energy. So if you're doing it in person with him and you fuck with him, you'd be like, okay, okay, I'll fuck with him or whatever. 
But you could, if somebody sends you over a record and be like, can you jump on this stuff like that? You don't know, he might have some snitching on him, like it, like anything. So I'd rather, if I can work with you in the studio, I don't want to do it. Do you kind of, do you feel like, like the streets and like rap music go hand in hand or like, because like, do you feel like politics should stop people from working with each other or how do you feel no, about that? I like? Think, uh, like I said, with me and YG and Nipsey did a song, I'm the one that really started the movement with Crips doing songs with blood. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It don't matter. I work with um, anybody. So if you're talented and you're a real nigga, that's all that matters to me. So do, do you feel like it kind of creates problems like in the streets though? Like, oh, like you did a song with my enemy, like I don't fuck with you now or like that type of vibes or? No, I just think that uh, a lot of people are stupid because when you're doing music, you're doing music to sell music. You know what I'm saying? You can, nothing overcomes good music. You know what I'm saying? So when you're doing bullshit, it's really on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if if they want to do some bullshit and try to stop your money or whatever like that, you need to move your circle. You need to stay away from them. Yeah. All right, then, man. Anything else you want to say to the people? Neighborhood, we out. Thank you.